Number 42. When water freezes, its volume increases by 9.05%. That is that the change in volume per the initial volume is equal to 9.5 times 10 to the minus 2. What force per unit area, aka pressure, is water capable of exerting on a container when it freezes? It is acceptable to use the bulk modulus of water in this problem. Great. So they're basically, I mean... They told us bulk modulus, right? But just remember that uh, whenever you're dealing with, you know, uh, some type of, uh, you know, liquid, talking about pressures and this and that, changes in volumes, you know you're going to be using the bulk modulus formula down here on the right-hand side, all right? So it says that the change in pressure is equal to negative, and the negative sign just implies that, right, as you increase pressure, you decrease volume. The bulk uh, modulus multiplied by the change in volume per the initial uh, volume. All right, straightforward. So uh, when they're asking us to find the what force per unit area, remember, pressure is equal to force per area. All right, so in other words, they're asking us to find the pressure. So this is a fairly straightforward problem. It's basically just plugging in. All right, so the we have to go to our table, find the bulk modulus of water. Here's water. Here's the bulk modulus, 2.2 .2 times 10 to the 9. 2.2 .2 times 10 to the 9. Just remember... All these values come with 10 to the 9 at the top, okay? So that's going to be multiplied now my percent change, right, which it worked out to be 9.05 times 10 to the minus 2. Okay, cool. So all I got to do is calculate now, right? So let's see. So we get 2.2 .2 times 10 to the 9 times 9.05, right, 9.05 times 10 to the minus 2. And wowzers. We get 1.99 times 10 raised to, let's see, 3, 6, 7, 8, 8 newtons, right? That is a tremendously large number. That's like 199 million, million newtons, okay? That's a tremendously large number. And, oh, it's not newtons, right? It's really newtons per meter squared, okay? So that's how many newtons there are per square meter, and that's an insane amount, right? Um, we can even, you know, we can break this down into, can even think about, you know, what it might be per square centimeter. And if I had to do that, basically, I would just take this value and divide it by 10,000, just like we did in the prior problem. So if I were to do that, it would be 1.99 1 1 times 10 to the fourth now, newtons per square centimeter, all right? Now, how much does this force actually relate to in, um, you know, uh, kilograms or, or mass? Well, remember, weight is equal to mg, all right? So 1.99 times 10 to the fourth is equal to mass times 9.80. Divide out the 9.80 from both sides, and let's see what it works out to be. So one, so divide that by 10,000. Let me do that first, and then simply take it divided by 9.8. So 2,000, 2,031, right? Or, or so, 32, whatever. 2,030, let's just say, kilograms. I mean, that's an insane amount, right? That's almost two tons um, per square centimeter. That's... I, uh, I, I don't find it surprising that that'll fracture engine blocks and boulders and stuff like that. All right. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. Oh, and that also makes makes sense why the roads around here are so terrible in the winter, right? There's a lot of holes out there on the road in the winter. Why? Here you go. All right. Please remember to subscribe. Look forward to uh, helping you with the next question. Take care.